everyone, Will Vincent from Glacier TV, along with Eric Hudek, who, as you all know, is the Senior Vehicle Dynamics Engineer for the iRacing.com simulator. Now, Eric, the reason why we're with you today is because we finally got the NTM V5 on the Williams FW31. Tell us a little bit about it. Sure. Um, we've been spending quite a bit of time over the last uh, year or so really uh, putting a lot of attention to the version 5 tires. Um, obviously, most of our cars have version 4 at the moment, um, but uh, we haven't really wanted to release version 5 um, up until most recently because there's been a lot of, a lot of little details that uh, we were really close on, on, on figuring out. Um, and uh, every time something made some progress, we made progress on something else, and we're like, well, we're going to hold it off a little bit longer uh, to get this other part integrated and, and working. So um, that's sort of how it's... Uh, moved along and uh we we just felt that uh, it was it was pretty good um to release on a, f a few of our cars and uh this past build you got to you got to drive it of course the biggest release with the ntm v5 was in partnership with the lotus 49 which came onto the iRacing service still less than one month ago how much of the data could you actually take from the lotus 49 um, tires to then you know speed up this release for the um, Williams car actually a lot I mean um, when you're working with a theoretical model you still have to spend quite a bit of time uh, tuning on it um, in, er in order for it to work with uh, the dynamics of the car and uh, what I learned with uh, developing the tires for the Lotus I was able to take pretty much straight away and um, and apply them to the Williams now we've been working I've been sort of working tandem working on the 49 and the fw31 uh over a period of months and uh, so it was uh was fairly seamless to take a lot of what i was able to learn tuning on either car and apply it to the other tell us a little bit about the differences between the ntm v4 and the ntm v5 um not only of course in the change in number but exactly how the kind of tires work not only in the car you know just doing one lap but over the course of a run itself as well well, with version four tires and version and earlier versions, um, we had some problems with how the rubber was actually behaving in terms of uh, how it reacted to temperatures and uh, sliding speeds and and, and so forth. And uh, we were basically able to come up with some uh, additions to those to the what we've already been using that uh, just um, was just a little more accurate. Um, as it turns out, small changes in accuracy, whether uh, whether it's intentional or by accident turns out can sometimes have large impacts on the handling of, of, of race cars so they're just little things over time uh that were in, improved and applied to this version 5 and uh it seems to have made quite a bit of impact on the performance of of the cars and over the last couple of years in iRacing, we have heard, you know, a number of blogs, a number of features by yourself and other people in the development of iRacing of just how critical those numbers are. I remember a couple of years ago, it all came down to rounding for a couple of things at the Super Speedway tracks. Um, but just how important are the tyre models to enhancing the experience for sim racers? I mean, it's the most important thing. I mean, you, you can get away with uh, modifying the aerodynamics or the suspension geometries um, or the masses and inertias, and you're not going to get the same impact on the racetrack as you will with small changes to a, how a tire handles, whether it's ultimate grip or how the grip develops with slip or how the grip falls off or how grip reacts while you're throttling and cornering at the same time. Uh, all those things are very, very important to the way the car handles and changing any specific detail on the chassis again or arrow basically pales in comparison to the dynamics of, of a tire. Now, let's turn our attention to the guys who's preparing to do 71 laps around the Circuit Park Zandvoort this weekend. What are the type of differences that these drivers are gonna have to deal with this week compared to previous rounds of the 2013 World Championship Series in relation to the way the tyres handle on the racetrack over the course of a long run? Well, uh, obviously, Zandvoort's a, a very high downforce track relative to Spa, for instance. And um, essentially, they're going to have to worry probably more so about the temperatures of the tyres. Um, there was a, some work put into into trying to peak the tyres' temperatures uh, for the peak amount of grip. And... Uh, 
depending on how everything goes, uh, some, it may show up over a longer run that uh, you can overheat your tires potentially. That's the hope anyways, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out. You talk about overheating. Are we going to be in a situation that we might um, at some point in the future get closer to having the ideas of blowouts or slow punctures or anything at all? Sure. Those are sort of second order effects. At, at, at this point, we're still concentrating on core fundamentals, um, fundamental tire performance. But uh, yeah, I mean, anything that increases the immersion of the sim is something that we're certainly interested in pers uh, pursuing. Um, it's just that on, on the sort of tabled elements we're trying to work on, those are sort of backburnered at this, at this point in time. But hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get to those, uh, not the, in, as, as soon as we can. And of course, already we have now the Williams FW31, we've got the Lotus 49, and also we've got ourselves the Skip Barber on the NTM V5 list. Um, I'll ask two questions here. First of all, is it the open wheel cars which kind of now have the advantage of getting the NTM V5 due to the fact that you've kind of cracked that model on those cars? And, and overall, what cars are we expecting to see the NTM, NTM V5 on next in the iRacing service in the next, you know, three to six months? Well, actually, the NTM version 5 is also on the street stock, um, which is predominantly an oval car. Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily that the open-wheel cars or sports cars or road course cars, however you want to classify, have an advantage over, say, stock cars or heavier uh, heavier cars. Um, it's just at this point in time, we felt like these were the you know three cars we originally wanted to release on the new tire model version 5. And then the FW1 was so far along that we felt, felt like we could put that out there. Uh, that's sort of not an, any indication of how we're going to proceed going forward. Um, for instance, I'm currently working on the FW1 still with new advancements since the latest build, and I'm working on uh, the high-level stock cars at the same time. Um, it's but the potential is that some additional uh, GT car might get it. Um, s perhaps the Formula Mazda might get it. It's really depending on sort of a time frame uh, thing and, and additional advancements. If we come up with a bunch of advancements that change sort of how the current cars on the new tire model version five are behaving or are acting on the racetrack, we'll have to go back and sort of tune on those to some degree. So it's sort of a moving target on how many cars we want to release going forward in the next build. Um, it, it really depends on how things pan out here in the next few weeks. If there's not a lot of changes with current cars, then we may be able to get a few more new cars on the version five model. And uh, those would likely be uh, a combination of, of classic oval cars or slash road course cars. I like that that point there. It's always a moving target. And I think that's one of the things that people always forget, that it is such a moving target uh, when it comes to, you know, developing. You see something new. You see it in all forms of racing. You know, you have something that you begin working on and then you find something else. But how does that affect everything else? So um, um, incredibly interesting about the work and the effort that goes into tires. Got two more questions for you. Um, the first one is what is actually the hardest car that you have to work on for developing, you know, the tire simulation for iRacing? Well, I would say uh, it's twofold um, for different reasons. The Lotus 49 was very complex and we weren't, weren't going to release it on the old tire model. So that's one of the reasons why it was delayed for so long. We just didn't feel like the version 5 was good enough of a step forward yet, and that's uh, why it took so long uh, to come to market. Um, that car in particular, because it's so light, uh, has such hard tires, makes no downforce, but yet sees incredible top speeds, it was very hard to sort of manage to sort of get the tires in a place where we felt like, yes, this is this is definitely strong that we can release it. It handles well, handles like we uh, we believe it should, and, uh, and that was difficult. On the flip side, the high-level stock cars um, see no other, no higher load uh, in all of motorsports, um, and that at very, very high speeds. So that that causes a different problem. So you end up having lightweight cars with high speed, with very lots of power, versus very, very highly loaded cars with not as much, still not as much downforce as say an F1 car, um, but at high speed, at high load, and those cause you know sort of similar problems but just in in different ways the 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 uh the issues sort of show up in different regimes of performance and final question again looking into the future um is there gonna 
perhaps one day be the possibility that the drivers, for example, in the World Championship Series, get the option to race in different compounded tyres? Is that something that iRacing are considering working on at all? Yeah, for sure. Again, that's sort of a, 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 an infrastructure issue rather than a, a tyre modelling issue. Uh, that's something that's certainly... Um something we're certainly looking at we've been talking about that for quite some time it's just it's 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 it you know we we don't ha actively have <laughs> unlimited amount of time to to work on things so that's just uh in in the on the priority list it's 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 working its way up we definitely want to get there and uh it's going to take some extra manpower to do so and uh Dave's fully booked and I'm fully booked and Grant's fully booked and Ian's fully booked. <laughs> so hopefully at some point we'll be able to get to a point where we can uh, add that because there's a number of cars in our service that can run on different compounds. And we obviously would like to, uh, to have that uh, available for our members. I kind of lied. Um, this is now going to be the final question. Of course, you talk about all these other people. Um, is there anyone who you'd like to uh, give a shout out to or anyone else, you know, because you are the public face in many ways of tyres for the iRacing service along with Dave K. Um, so is there anyone else you'd like to give a shout out for for all these huge developments that's come on in the last, you know, years?